Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is November 21st, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. You can see Alaska, BC, Washington, Oregon, California here. Here's the Hawaiian Islands, Pacific Ocean. Here comes our next storm system rushing towards Pacific Northwest, up training a little bit in the strength of the system. It's going to put an end to this dry streak for much of the Pacific Northwest here as well. Take a look at the extended forecast as always. Some cold air looks like it might try to get towards our region here in the extended forecast. We'll be taking a look at that in some detail here and see what the model ones have to say about that looking at seattle a little bit above average with 52 degrees here and what we're looking at here are some of the record lows set back in 1985 if you look closely here november 24 2010 got down to 14 at SeaTac with a nice arctic outbreak that came down into the region here 12 years ago just before thanksgiving a lot of you might remember that one and this is that upper air map here 18,000 feet polar lobe nicely placed here across pacific northwest really got us quite well and brought widespread snowfall across the region here now taking a look here ice accumulation possible today eastern washington got to get a, this out there quick you can see highway 2 i-90 there are some potential for some freezing rain some of these valleys as well up towards the east slopes of the cascades idaho panhandle northwest montana bc some cold air will be trapped as this um, precipitation starts to move over the region and doesn't take much ice to make things pretty slick across the area so heads up for your thanksgiving travelers out there you can see the holiday week timeline tuesday is the big day here then we're going to be clearing out mainly wednesday and thursday and probably mostly dry here across the Pacific Northwest, and then maybe some more uh, systems coming in through this next weekend, or another system, I should say. Uh, looking at Seattle, they do have a gale warning with this next system coming in here. Uh, gale warning, a uh, gale watch for the Strait of Juan de Fuca. Gale warning is for the coastline currently right now. Now, taking a look here, this is the GFS on the right, the European on the left. Now, you can see that very weak front that kind of fell apart as it moved in here this morning. Um, you can see the next system rolling through here. The GFS kind of has more of a closed low here moving across the region, but pretty good punch on both models here. And you can see the precipitation, snowfall across some of the Oregon Cascades, Washington Cascades. And you'll see this mixed bag here across some of the eastern Washington. That would be the potential for some freezing rain. And that could also impact down into some of the valleys here. Of, like I said, Idaho Panhandle, eastern BC, northwest Montana, east slopes to the Cascades of Washington mainly. You can see the higher terrain of northeast Oregon getting some snow out of this system as well. Now we're looking um, late Tuesday night into Wednesday morning at this point. You can see the precipitation starting to trail off here, but still impact areas of the Rocky Mountains Wednesday morning here continues to push off through late Wednesday morning towards Wednesday afternoon strong storm system moves into southeast Alaska but mainly keeps Washington Oregon Idaho Montana dry and much of BC as well but you can see it starting to impact areas north of Vancouver Island maybe some precip even down into western BC as we go through Wednesday afternoon here comes Thanksgiving here you can see both the GFS and the European for Washington Oregon are pretty dry uh, Kind of a weak atmospheric river impacting areas of western BC here as we go through Thursday. And then you can see that frontal system kind of move towards the area. But Thanksgiving looks pretty dry across much of the region here so far. And I, I think it's probably going to stay that way too. The model's been pretty consistent with that. Now this is looking at the HER, the high resolution model here. This is going to go out 48 hours. That weak front fell apart. Then the next one comes through here mainly uh, late tonight for BC. Tuesday morning for Western Washington, as you can see there, you can see the snowfall starting in the Cascades, some freezing precip again, possible for portions of Eastern Washington, some of the low lying valleys out there as well, where cold air is trapped. And you see that frontal system swing down through Tuesday afternoon and finally get out of here for Western Washington, Oregon by Tuesday evening and night and continue to push on through Idaho and Montana later on Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. Then we should be dry through Thursday. Now taking a look here, let's see what the NAM has to say about that as well. Here goes that frontal system rolling through Tuesday morning. You can see, again, that has some precipitation in the frozen form, freezing rain all the way down to the floor there in eastern Washington mainly. And you can see that frontal system move through the timing of the bat. It passes through about Tuesday afternoon and through Wednesday evening there as well. And that pushes off east through Idaho and Montana on in through Tuesday night and Wednesday morning again. So now looking at this, this is the European. This is rainfall, snowfall. There's sleet and there's freezing rain here. Freezing rain's in the upper right here. It's going to be the pink. Now you can see the system move in here and you can see some of the valleys there might get some freezing rain. You see through eastern Washington as well. You see the snowfall in the bottom left here. Across the Idaho Panhandle, Montana, Cascades, a little bit down to the Oregon Cascades, not much, probably even a little more towards northeast Oregon here as this front moves through. But you can see the precipitation really moves down all the way towards the California-Oregon border there, higher amounts as you go north across towards Vancouver Island.
So let's take a look at the extended forecast here now. We have the GFS on the left and the GFS on the right. This is this morning's run hot off the presses here on the left. This is yesterday afternoon's run here on the right. 5,000 foot temperature anomaly looking at here. Here goes Tuesday's system. Then we're going to speed ahead till Friday here. You can see this colder air spilling off the coast of Alaska here over the Gulf of Alaska back into the Pacific Northwest. Then you'll notice this colder air starting to come down through Alaska and the Yukon towards British Columbia here as we go to the following Monday morning here. We're about 174 hours out here. But you can see a pretty chilly air mass setting up over British Columbia here in both GFS runs here. Um, you know, the one on the left here is pretty nasty. It would be a pretty significant Arctic outbreak here for the Pacific Northwest. But we are way out there at this point. The European is not showing as much cold air, but it is showing some pretty chilly air getting over British Columbia. here. We'll take a look at that here in a moment. Now taking a look here, this is the European on the left versus on the right. Yesterday afternoons did have some pretty cold air coming over British Columbia, but not near as much as the GFS. Now we're going to go ahead and look into Friday morning, actually Saturday morning here. You can see the um, air starts to spill off the coast of Alaska here over the Gulf of Alaska. And actually a little bit of an uptick here on the 06Z European run. As you can see a bit more cold air moving through Alaska and the Yukon here. So kind of an upward trend there on the cooler air that's going to try to make its way down to the Pacific Northwest through next week and in the following week here. So we'll continue to watch that closely here as we go over the next couple of days. Take a look at the GFS here. You can see this is max min temperature ensemble spread. You can see the cool down kind of coming there towards the end of November, towards early December here in some of the ensemble runs here. This blue bar is the 90th and 10th percentile of the ensemble runs. The blue line here is the control run here, the deterministic. That's what uh, the conditions we best understand them to be and we just kind of let it run out. And the green line there is the mean temperature. But you can see kind of a cool down showing up in the model runs, but we have a ways to go for that. We'll continue to watch it day by day. This is a GFS for Spokane, however. Check out the control run as you got into early December here. Again, as you go east of the Cascades out there, it is definitely easier to get Arctic air into the region there, and it kind of shows up here on the GFS. But again, still fantasy land at this point, but there is a little bit of confidence in this colder air mass coming to the Pacific Northwest. This is Seattle Tacoma here on the European. Yesterday afternoons, you can see that cool down even showing up there in the European a bit here. So something we're going to watch here on through the extended again. Now take a look at what's coming tomorrow. You can see we've ticked up a little bit in some of the wind speeds here. Some of the ensembles showing upper 30s and down towards the lower 40 mile per hour range. But still, there's some lesser speeds in here as well. But could be a blustery front moving through the day tomorrow. So if you get a little wind and leaves blowing around, that's why this frontal system will be rolling through. You'll be noticing it raining across the area and kind of a smattering of some uh, higher winds out here through the extended purely fantasy at this point. Nothing to worry about. Putting this into motion, here comes that system on in through tomorrow tomorrow you can see 43 at SeaTac calling here on last night's European run some pretty gusty winds for the higher elevation here as you can see some strong winds across Whidbey Island I, well, I shouldn't say strong but gusty winds uh, and nothing like you're not used to along the Washington Oregon coast but a nice blustery day there as well now, taking a look at Seattle-Tacoma, this is yesterday night's European run here. You can see the control is just uh, just over half an inch here, so not a bad little precipitation maker coming in here tomorrow. And you can see a little bit of a dry down, then maybe some precip returning as we come towards the weekend here. But we'll look at more of that tomorrow as this becomes more clear in the forecast. Here is the European yesterday afternoon. As you can kind of see just... Uh, Increase of precipitation looks like it's going to be coming towards the end of next week in here, but this could be with the cooler air mass too. So my, you can see how it's backed off on some of the actual precipitation amounts. We had a few of the model runs showing over an inch during a 24-hour period here, um, and that's kind of backed off on that a little bit here as this air mass looks like it's cooling down some in the model runs as we saw. This is for UG, and look at the means up towards two-tenths of an inch. A little bit of an uptick here as this frontal system approaches here on in through tomorrow afternoon. Now, taking a look here for the GFS, you can see actually the control has over an inch in a 24-hour period as this storm comes through here tomorrow. And then you can see we're going to be dealing with some systems out here as well next weekend on the GFS also. Now, I want to take a look at this. This is the northern hemisphere. Let's zoom in a little bit here. You can see the cold air at 10,000 feet bottled up over the North Pole across some of eastern Canada here and, of course, Siberia as we talked about yesterday. Now, we put this into motion here, and this is what we're going to be talking about. This is going on into Friday. You see the cold air start to spill 
all over the Gulf of Alaska here, make its way down towards the Pacific Northwest. And then it's this polar lobe that we're watching back here. How much of a swing at the Pacific Northwest is this going to take? This is this morning's GFS. Bring some pretty chilly air down here over British Columbia, as you can see. Um, I mean, we would definitely feel this, but again, we're getting pretty far out there, but it does show up in some of the smartphone apps. I get questions about it. So I'm just trying to explain it the best I can to you here coming up. So this is that polar lobe swinging down. How much of us, you know, how much of the Pacific Northwest will this clip or will this stay mainly east of the Rockies? You know, we'll watch the trend over the next few days and see if we can increase confidence on what is coming here through next weekend and the following week. Now taking a look to this hot off the presses, La Nina forecast. So right now, um, we're just coming into December. We're in late November now. And you can see once we hit December, the temperature across the equatorial Pacific, look like you're going to warm up pretty quick in here. By the time we get to March, we're probably going to be out of La Nina if you believe the CFS model here. This was run just this morning today. So uh, that's what we'll be watching. You can see right now La Nina is still in charge. If you look closely here at this map, that's Hawaii. This is the equator here in South America and Mexico. You can see La Nina is still in charge here across the Pacific. But then you see it start to wane here. Look, by the time you get into um, next spring, and early summer here, look at this. We got La Nina looking, or El Nino looking conditions here going on into next summer. So we'll see how that goes right now. I mean, but yeah, we've been in, this is the third straight year in La Nina and it's it's got to flip. I mean, I've never seen four in a row. So you know this is coming and we'll just have to take it um, a month at a time. We'll kind of see how this transition goes. But anyway, yeah, here comes our storm system. It's going to bluster. You're going to put an end to that precipitation drought finally here across Pacific Northwest. And then we may turn colder next week and in towards the following week here. We'll continue to watch that and see what how the model runs trend with that. It's still a ways out there. But again, like I said, I'm getting some questions about it already. So I figure I'd go over it and try to nip things in the bud a little bit here. So there's not much consistency in the model runs just yet. It's only been showing up for a couple days now. Um, so we'll continue to monitor that. Yeah, enjoy that storm tomorrow on the precipitation. Click like and subscribe. And we will do this again tomorrow, and I'll talk to you guys then.